I'm just going to give a quick introduction to Sonu, so all of you know who he is. And thank you, Sonu, for coming on this uh, session and agreeing to come on uh, Main Gate Darbar and being one of the speakers for this. And again, to just uh, give a background to some of you who are coming in for the first time. So it started off, it is still an informal session where we have people from different aspects of design. Um, in this case, specifically an ID alumni, teachers. And the idea is more than presenting work is to understand more about them, what makes them who they are, their thinking process, um, how they do what they do, their challenges. And the format is to do this through anecdotes. So it's not so much of giving gyan, it's no more about you know, uncovering layers and finding out things which we've not heard about them. And to be able to go with some nugget or something which can inspire us uh, moving forward. Um, so just a quick overview on Sonal. Sonal's three passions he speaks about um, is advertising. I would actually change that to storytelling, which I think Sonal is, uh, is, is the avatar he's taken on from before. Blackjack, which he does on the weekends and uh, single malt, that's been another pet passion of his. And his career in advertising is been over 30 years, it spanned three decades. He looks like he's 26, but uh, he's been around doing uh, creative work for uh, you know, almost 30 years. So started off with O&M in the 90s and he was uh, instrumental working with the team, um, you know, and taking it to number one. Then he went to uh, Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, and he was uh, involved with taking uh, the team there, the creative ranking. They got uh, awards under him, the one show goal, the first time somebody from that part of Asia uh, got the award there. And uh, then he was again heading Bates, uh, DDB uh, some time. And in 2017, he was also uh, called the Creative Leader of the Year by IAA. And that's a big, it's a massive uh, accolade to win. Um, he was, at the end, he was, uh, O&M, he was a vice chairman, group chief executive. Uh, he played that role, an additional role of even Southeast Asia, he was a chief creative officer. And uh, he's also uh, serving for uh, jury duty. He keeps getting called in for Khan. Uh, he was, he's now going to be in 2020 the president of the direct uh, line jury. And besides that, there are other aspects to him. He's plays many, many hats. He's been a TV host in the past. Um, he gracefully allowed Shah Rukh Khan to become who he is by stepping aside after 4G and saying, Shah Rukh Khan, you go forth. I'll stand back and take care of everything else. And uh, he was also a playwright. There was a, a, a play which he wrote, which was performed in Singapore. In this current avatar, he's doing content. I've been interacting with Sonal first. I know of him as a senior. And when I was in core, I was working in Ahmedabad and I had this, uh, this function uh, with Corrugated. I did this big uh, award thing and Sonal was one of the jury members. It's the first time I interacted. I remember I had this big fear of public speaking and uh, I didn't know Sonal, but Sonal gave me some quick tips before I went on stage. Uh, what to do, how to speak, and uh, it was very generous and inspired me a lot right from those days. We kept in touch, uh, we met in Dubai, and both of us are writing uh, a novel now, and we keep connecting to inspire each other, uh, checking what's happening, pushing each other. When he was in Dubai, we went shopping for one of his new hobbies, cooking. Uh, we got this big board which he got personalized, etc. And I think what stri strikes me most about Sonal is he besides the fact that he looks like he doesn't age, mentally he doesn't age. Sonal is full of life, he's always curious, he's looking at learning from everybody besides everything I told you about. The way he behaves, he takes up each day as if he's going to pick up something new. Every person he interacts with, I see him listen intently and he walks away with something. And there's this uh, aura of humility which he carries around and uh, he's always fun. So that's Sonal, the storyteller. And uh, I mean, let's start off. Welcome to the session, Sonal. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for such a, such a lovely introduction, Sajid. And uh, I think that's what friends are for. Thank you. So thank you very much for that. And uh, uh, thank you for inviting me today because, uh, you know, NID ke saath, it's such a pleasure for all of us to, uh, you know, kitne ke saath, even if you're not on an everyday chat basis, but the moment you see everybody together and jab wo, uh, baate sunte hai, when you hear the sounds of their voices, you know, so many memories just come back as if it was just yesterday. Yeah. And uh, 
and especially in the times that we are going uh, through right now where only thing that i've been seeing is just different rooms like all of us so it's it's a real pleasure to see all of you right now and thank to you. talk to you thank you so much i'm going to uh, lead you with a bunch of questions um, it's going to be more like a, a session where we're going to be speaking about and uh, also another quick one is we also have news that uh, MGD himself is on the Zoom call. So a big shout out and welcome to MGD. Thank you so much for coming in on this. So we have MGD on MGD. It's not something which happens usually. Uh, so welcome to MGD. So Sonal, over to hi, you. Hi, 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 MGD. MGD, if you can unmute and okay, say hello. My, hi to him. So uh, Sonal, the first question I'm going to ask you is, uh, in, during one of our uh, interactions, which we had in Bombay, you had shared with me where there's a novel which you started working on based on your childhood. Uh, I mean, your journey starts from a small town, uh, you know, where your mom played a very, very instrumental part on shaping who you are, your siblings. So I want to take you back to that time, um, to your childhood. And what I'm curious about is, are there uh, experiences or anecdotes or stories from your childhood which has shaped your creative thinking, your curiosity, your storytelling skills. Tell us a little bit about what it was like. What was your childhood like? Um, and you know that little bit of the stories you were sharing in your novel. So if I can take you back in that time and uh, back to nostalgia. Yeah, so I think that's a wonderful first question because it takes me back all the way back to, I mean, my childhood, very, very, the first, few memories of my childhood being spent in different cities across uh, across UP. So my dad used to be in the government, UP government service. And uh, he was, it was a kind of transferable job. So places like Hassanpur, Rampur, Rurki. Uh, so these are the kind of Itawa. Itawa was the place where I was born. And just today I came to know that Kavi Neeraj, who wrote Phoolon Ke Rang Se, Dil Ki Kalam Se, and Karma Guzargaya Gubar Dekhte Rahe is also from Itawa. So I think some, some creativity might have come in because of that. So, uh, so as it happened, grew up, uh, uh, was born in Itawa, then Chote Chote Shairon Se Hote Ve. Then we, when we were in Hassanpur, uh, my dad passed away suddenly one morning, and that is the opening chapter of my, the book that I'm writing. Uh, book in the sense it's part auto part it's an autobiography so which will kind of trace my journey and uh, from different little cities to design and to uh, you know to where i am right now uh, you know and someday possibly hopefully i'll make a film so so some, some of those memories are so after my dad passed away we went to uh, live with our nani and nani was that time in uh, a place called, uh, not a place called, everybody knows it. She was in Agra at that time. And Bahape, it was a, like a big, uh, big house. And uh, we were renting, which was part of Sherom Ali Koti, one of those old uh, Kotis, which was built by Rai Bahadur Amba Prasad. And uh, so we were on the back part of that Koti. And uh, we had, uh, so I grew up with, uh, you know, there were mamas and mossies and my cousins. And uh, so it was, uh, you know, every day was full of laughter. And there was this little angan, cricket khelna hota tha. And uh, one good thing that was there in that, in that madness was uh, that uh, everybody, you know, my, my older brothers, my uncles, my aunts, my mom, Everybody had their own likes and dislikes in terms of what they read. Uh, so, for example, right from Jam, James Hadley Chase to uh, Dharm Yoga and Saptaik Hindustan and all kinds of magazines and books used to just keep lying around. And uh, I was, I don't know, right from the beginning, I was a very curious child. So, sabkuch padhna, you know, sabkuch dekhna, that kind of, uh, that kind of childhood. And I think that, uh, so, one was that, kind of definitely influenced uh, my, uh, my thinking and uh, all the inputs that came in, I think, uh, 
shaped a lot in terms of the personality, personality of curiosity, of wanting to know a lot of things. So whether it's the love for the language, love for writing, love for poetry, to, uh, to listening to all kinds of music. So there was uh, an uncle of mine who uh, later became a doctor and uh, went, to, went on to uh, settle in the, in the UK. Uh, he passed away so la last year and he was very very keen his his uh, you know his taste was that he wanted to learn to learn to speak english the way english speak english so he used to listen to bbc every morning you know and he was a very keen learner of the language english language so that so love for different kinds of languages although and i used to be a keen observer of uh, how you know in agra uh, the way the way everybody has an accent you know every every place in india that you go to has got a definite definite way of speaking so like you have an accent in lucknow you have you know accent of speaking lucknowi lucknowi hindi to ilhabadi hindi too so there was this typical agra hindi also so to keenly observe that and then uh, getting interested in drawing painting performing theater you know bit of music so all kinds of uh, all kinds of so I, I guess i guess the childhood gave a lot of uh, fodder so to say a lot of lot of different influences which got into the head and which i kind of assimilated because uh, of my curiosity maybe because i really enjoyed that and i think all that later helped me Possibly not only getting into NID, but post NID education to get into advertising, where I kind of started to use all that almost every day, whether it's in the writing, whether it's trying to understand the target audience that you're speaking to. Uh, so I think this curiosity and uh, empathy and all these values that got in early in the childhood helped a lot. So I want to ask you about the, let's say, second chapter which I'm going to yep. ask a couple of questions so you can sort of narrate those together. Starting oh, from, how did you hear about NID? What is the whole experience of applying and uh, your first impression during the interview when you walked into campus? What do you think it was like? And you know, that whole stint of getting into campus when you were there, the first thing you saw, what were your first impressions? Again, coming from a small town, what you walked away with, your influence, the whole your stint at NID from beginning, can you just share a few uh, anecdotes or you know how, how the whole experience was? So you know, that's, a, that's another story and I, <clears throat> I'm myself so fascinated with that, even though it's my own story, that I wrote a post on it also. And uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll recount that story to you of how I came to know of NID. That in itself is, you know, one of those, uh, which, uh, and I'll tell you what it kind of led me to believe. So I used to study in the school called St. Peter's College and uh, we had, uh, by, that, by the time I'd reached like, when I was, uh, let's say, I think uh, I was in my, I was 10 years old or something that I, there was a, I used to sketch and paint a bit, you know, a little bit. And uh, in Agra, like many other towns, you have these various clubs like JCs and, you know, Lions Club and I'm sure Many of you must have experienced that. And there was this JC's club, which used to organize every year uh, a painting competition for school children. And I participated in it. And because I used to, I used to be mad about drawing and painting. And uh, so I participated in it. And this was 1969, that, that, that the year that I participated. And that, that seemed like, my God, so long back. And that year, man had landed on the moon and uh, uh, so and i wanted to at that point in time become an astronaut so i was really really uh, you know fascinated by uh, whatever i could read about space travel and flying and all that and especially space travel and uh, so uh, the painting that i did was uh, so i don't know which uh, how old i was but like Oh, 69, so I must have been like eight, nine years old. So, um, eight years old, no, seven years old. 
So at the yeah, seven, at seven, seven, eight years old, I made that painting and I came first in in, uh, in Agra. And uh, so from then onwards, the sketching and painting became a big thing with me. I started to draw a lot, paint a lot, draw a lot, paint a lot. And then when I was in, uh, in my, I think uh, in my fourth standard, this is barely a uh, uh, couple of years after I had won the painting competition and I was re like really keen on painting and drawing. Uh, one of my aunts, my youngest aunt, got married to an architect. So when I met my uncle architect, Mr. Satish Dabral, when we got talking, and uh, then he saw my drawing and painting. He said, you know, everybody is becoming a doctor and engineer in a family. You know, everybody, because my mama was a doctor, my brother wanted to become a doctor, my eldest brother was getting into, was into math and physics and all that. But you should do something creative. So, and you should become an architect, you know. So this is, imagine at the, at the age that I was in, I must have been like fourth or fifth standard, is when my mind was set to become an architect. It was set, you know, when, People are, people don't even know what they'll, you know, whether they'll be getting into sixth standard or seventh standard or whatever, you know. People have vague notions at that time of what they'll become. But in my head, because I was so involved with, uh, you know, drawing, painting, watercolors and all that, that uh, I had decided in my mind that I'll become an architect. So then I used to read about architecture, whatever I could read, you know. I mean, anytime I... After that, I remember when I went to see the Taj after that, I was looking at even the Taj Mahal with new eyes, you know. And, oh my God, look at that. Ah, kya, kya building hai, you know? So even at, that date, even at that age, to be set in your mind that you'll become an architect. Now, when I reached my 10th standard, something very odd happened one day. So there was my, the room that, uh, uh, there was one room which, you know, my, uh, me and my brothers, two of my other brothers used to share in terms of studying there. And that room was also used as uh, by my brother, my uncle, whenever his friends, he was in medical college at that time. And my brother had just gotten into medical college. And uh, whenever those, uh, those uh, his, their friends used to come, they used to sit in that room and you know, have tea and all that and chat and then go back. Now, one day, I was cleaning by the, you know, one of those, I now remember how, uh, how disciplined we were as kids, you know, kids of, of the past, all of us, I'm sure when we were growing up were so disciplined compared to the kids that I see today, or even my kids. So every month, very diligently, I used to, there used to be this wooden cupboard that I used to take out all my books and uh, take out all the, you know, torn wrappers, which you, Akbar ka kaag, kaagas chada ke, you know, brown papers so usko upar cover chada ke. Then used to put the label on that and usko upar, you know, cursive writing mein se naam likh ke, you know, all that used to happen. So one month, I took out all the books and the sara jo newspaper bichhaya hua tha maa pe, wo bhi nikal diya. Usko jhada wada, you know, phir mein papis jo hai, I'm keeping the books back again. And as I'm keeping the books back again, a green cyclostyled form falls out, yeah, on, from one of the books. This I'm talking about in my 10th standard. So by now, I like next year, I will be taking the CEPT exam, which is Center of Environmental Planning and uh, CEPT, yeah, whatever. CEPT was in the, uh, Delhi was Delhi School of Architecture. So I'm taking the Delhi School of Architecture in the 11th standard. That was all set. So this cyclist style sheet falls out of one of the books. So I said, oh my God, what is this? Looks very odd. You know, what is this cyclist style sheet doing in my book? So I pick it up and I open it. And, you know, it's like faded, uh, faded uh, typewritten, you know, those cyclist style. I'm, uh, I don't know, some of you younger ones might not know cyclist style, but there was to be something called cyclist style. So the faded typewritten letter said National Institute of Design. So no photograph, nothing, just typewritten sheets. And it said prospectus or whatever, uh, uh, requirements for, uh, for, uh, for application. So I started to read it. I said, National Institute of Design? What is design? Because design in our head, 
design and our heads were gaadi ka border ya yeah, you know design uh, billboard paint karte hain you know design has a very odd meaning in the in the head so i said in national institute of design kya hota hai so i started reading and then i read things ceramic design exhibition design visual communication oh my god visual and communication what is this graphic design ye graphic kya hota hai you know so one knew the kind of vague meaning of words because i was in the 10th standard studying in a kind of english medium school but uh, the the concept was absolutely alien and then i read things by uh, uh, then i read you know drawing and uh, knowing drawing is an asset owning a camera will be an asset and it talked of photography classes it talked of film making classes it gave a really nice uh, so those uh, that green cyclo style sheet that very old faded paper but in my mind it was painting such a fantastic odd picture you know of of a of a of a very different world that i had been exposed to till then so i said this is this is cool so i knew that was in my head for the next few days just a week later right we we were in school and uh, our physics teacher or one of the teachers was not well so that teacher didn't come right i just read satish gokhale's uh, message to everyone that he also remember cyclo style copies so satish gokhale is slightly older than me yeah <clears throat> satish gokhale can't even laugh because he's on mute ha huh. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so satya anyway this is just, just a little joke ha huh? so uh, so that cyclo style sheet right so so now we one week later i am in school now physics or some english teacher that day didn't come because he or she was not well so like always we were given that period free and we like uh, tell standard we just ran out you know but i kind of limped out because i had kind of hurt my foot and every time we used to have a free period the first thing we used to hit used to be the soccer ground because soccer was big in agra soccer and hockey and we used to be playing that all the time and especially i used to love that so i would have definitely gone to the soccer field but i said yeah let me not go sala pair pair mein lagi hui hai thoda so let me let me just go to the library and spend some time so i headed to the library library mein aa gaya and i said oh now only 35 minutes left 25 minutes left let me just go back to the back part of the library and from there i will pick up some magazines and I'll just, just go just go through them yeah just uh, you know casually flip through them so i went back and there used to this, be this magazine called span which used to be a us embassy publication and there was this bunch of spans lying there the first thing that i saw so i picked up that bunch and brought back to the table and i sat there and i kind of removed the dust yeah and i think that dust removing was akin to removing the dust from that cyclo style sheet because the two are related you know yes. some echoing happening here so i opened the span magazine you won't believe it right that the first span magazine the first third page as i opened was a full four page feature on the national institute of design in ahmedabad and it was in full color it was not a green cyclo style sheet it was in full color and there i saw that lawn that we are all familiar with there i saw that beautiful monument you know at the back and there i saw the studios and you know all the students working on you know wood lathe machine and ceramic design and you know and uh, people you know drawing and all that and uh, people having you know beautiful morning on that lawn and uh, girls and guys all having uh, tea and all so i said this is fantastic man i mean this 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 cyclo style sheet i saw and this this is the place and that all those all those uh, lovely courses you know so that's when it hit me that boss you know school of architecture is good but let me uh, let me try this one also and uh, so just to cut a long story short because i just wanted to build this up to tell you how uh, how how uncanny it was that these uh, these things happen one day one after the other so that's what i feel that you know i feel that in every moment yeah in every moment that we pass through 
right? The, the moments that are passing right now, there are actually a million possibilities in, in each moment. And uh, you never know, you take one, you, you take one decision, it take, leads you to another. You take one decision, it leads you to the other. So just to cut the long story short, uh, come uh, 12, so I, I wrote immediately to NID. I went back home, wrote to NID saying that I'm interested. Can you send me this year's form? Blah, 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 blah. I got a mail from them, which was fantastic. Uh, thank you, MGD. And uh, I got a mail. And uh, the mail said that, you know, we take people only after the 12th standard. So you please wait. Uh, you can try after the 11th, but you please wait till the 12th standard. So I said, I said, okay. So I waited for the next two years and the letter said, please keep in touch. So I did kind of kept in touch. Come 12th, I'm in Delhi now and I am uh, picking up the, you know, application form for NID and the NID exam was in Delhi at the School of Architecture. Now I'm wondering, at School of Architecture, I still remember right now, while I was taking the NID form, I was inquiring from NID, uh, School of Architecture students, what do you think is better, School of Architecture or NID? You know, because there's such a huge dilemma in my head. Here is School of Architecture that everybody knows about. My uncle is, from, is an architect, you know, everybody knows about. But there is some NID somewhere in Ahmedabad that nobody knows about. What will one become? What will happen after NID? And uh, so that was a big dilemma. So anyway, because the decision was that I'll take both the exams and let's see what happens. The, I took the NID exam and just see how things work out in life. That year, uh, School of Architecture exam was changing from 11th standard to becoming after 12th standard because I think the SSC or something was changing from or CBSC was changing from 10 plus 1 to 10 plus 2 or something like that. So just that year, School of Architecture exam was happening after the NID exam. So anyway, I took the NID exam and I came back to Agra. And three or four days later, I get this pink telegram, which says, congratulations, you've been selected in NID and you have to report into NID on the 5th of July. So that was the day we were supposed to report. Now 5th of July is just a week away. So this person who's never left Agra, right? Who doesn't even know whether he should become, who should, he should join NID or what is NID? or he should join School of Architecture that he'd been thinking of all these years, but he's got only one week to decide. And plus this kind of expensive NID, I think uh, it was expensive, you know? So when I think uh, there must have been, uh, when there should have been celebration happening, he my God got into NID, in my head, I was wondering what to do, you know? Going to NID is just the one week, just one week away. So you have to prepare things. You have to get the brief, somehow get uh, the reservation for the train or whatever. You know, get the get everything organized and uh, organize the fee and everything. And you have to also take school of architecture. What should one do? I am now talking to my, you know, my brothers are there. My uh, and the brothers are saying, but do you know what what will you do after NID? And uh, the same dilemma, they were also facing the same dilemma, you know, but you know, architecture, everybody knows about, you know, so what should one do, what should one do, what should one do? So I remember we are in this room, the two, three of us are talking, my older brother, uh, my two older brothers, we are kind of generally chatting. And my mother in one corner was a little puja. You know? And she was at that time do, doing some, she was finishing the aarti. So she had that ghanti in her hand, right? And she's going, oh, no, 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 what is that? Some, some Shivji or Ramji Aarti is happening, right? Right? And we are like discussing, right? Discussing, discussing. She does the Aarti, 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 Aarti. In between the Aarti, she just turns around, right? Is, then she says, why do you have to think so much, right? Tashu, Tashu, that's my, my kind of gharka nickname. 
अच्छा ताशु तुझे दोनों अच्छे लगते हैं एनआईडी भी है और वो भी है तो इस पर इतना सोचना क्या एनआईडी जा राइट एंड बिकॉज शी न्यू एनआईडी जा अगर अच्छा ना लगे तो स्कूल ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर एग्जाम वॉज थ्री वीक्स आफ्टर आई वॉज सपोज टू ज्वाइन एन आई डी एन आई डी अच्छा ना लगे तो स्कूल ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर जाके एग्जाम दे देना नाउ इन द कंडीशन दैट वी वर इन दैट वॉज लाइक पुटिंग इन अज चंक कंपनी ऑल द प्रिपरेशन एंड ऑल दैट एंड गोइंग देर राइट बट इन हर हेड माई मदर न्यू दैट आई लाइक एन आई डी मोर आई वॉज लीनिंग टूवर्ड्स एन आई डी मच मोर देन स्कूल ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर so she knew what i wanted and she just said just go for it and that's when you realize that these mothers are like you know goddesses absolute so so that that that's something also that 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 moment of my life i never forget so that's how it was decided now once it was decided because things became easy after that chat okay went no reservation right so somehow Uh, the day came to kind of leave for an id i i i so sajit i'm just taking you through till the first day at an id as you as you as you asked me right i don't know we are running out of time or whatever but no doesn't matter It's... so now imagine agra fort station of some of some of you might have seen agra fort station but this i'm talking of so many years back agra fort station there used to be one train that used to go to andabad directly from agra at that time just one train and that one train basically meant that that dabba went till it used to be a train that was going to bhopal or somewhere uska dabba used to get disconnected at uh, i'm forgetting the name of the station at that station that dabba used to lie for like 3 4 hours before one train from delhi used to come and it used to get attached and then it goes to amdavad now that means that the journey was like some 36 to 42 hours long you know right from agra to amdavad now i get into this so obviously there's no reservation you just one week of time no reservation got to agra station and paid some money to the kuli and i was literally pushed into the bogey you know by the kuli right with my little bag and i'm on that uh, luggage rack so i just just sat part slept on that luggage rack for the next 36 42 hours so it was i you know done that that journey was in itself a lesson it's like going through i think it was very symbolic you know which is leaving agra behind going through this fire of this journey of 36 42 hours to getting getting into a new life all together in an id you know and uh, you know that kind of i sometimes i used to recount this story to some of my juniors and in my agencies and i used to tell them you know that that journey also taught me that you know that life uh, will never keep your seat reserved for you you know so life in life you'll keep getting into situations which where everything is unreserved so you have to do it through your hard work through your talent through your diligence or whatever right but uh, i mean not that i'm i'm not saying that every time you pay 5 rupees to get that luggage rack but that's a that's a kind of a lesson that i got in that journey anyway i land at uh, paladi bleary eyed yeah and i come out of the station and that bag with me and one auto guy comes in and he looks at me and says paladi because many people arrive around july you know who look bleary eyed i guess so i said paladi i said he is he said ha 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 chalo 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 so i got into this rickshaw 5:30 in the morning or 5:30 or 6 and then rickshaw takes me to the back gate of nid hostel gate and i get down there and at that time none of these newer buildings were there you know so we were when we first came when we were put into these what were called the barracks you know there was one hostel that was already up which was being shared by half was uh, the girls hostel and one wing was the boys hostel but all senior boys were there like third year onwards the two foundation batches were in the in this uh, uh, boys barracks so to say so anyway my auto stopped there at the gate 
and the guard said acha naya batch so i said yeah naya batch so i said take note ruko and he makes a call and two gentlemen come out in their kurta pajamas you know and old, elderly looking gentlemen i mean yeah like to me at that time elderly looking like 35 40 42 types and they come and very decent looking as it's come 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 they say and they pick up my luggage right so i'm saying no i'll pick it no sir no, no, pick up so i'm thinking yeah maybe there are some you know they're really kind helpers who are helping you to take you to the uh, to the to the to your uh, rooms but then they take us to the barracks and i'm introduced to my roommates so still sandal yeah you know on and those barracks but i knew like you know and then came 9:30 in the morning and we all went to this uh, and this beautiful lawn that i'd uh, seen in the span magazine was out there we were milling around there we met the uh, met everybody and all that and then uh, realized when we was introduced to the uh, The teachers and gentlemen who had picked up my other luggage was Mr. Balram. So then I told myself, "What a fantastic place I am in! You know, what a beautiful place this is, right?" And uh, by that evening, my my mother was proven right because by that evening I decided that this is the place for me. The only time a bit of a hitch came was, uh, I think, on the second day or third day, we were all. Uh, taken on a bus to a, for an amdabad tour and we were taken also to im amdabad and i saw that fantastic bloody building uh, designed by louis kahn and i was i came back and i was depressed for i think an hour or so thinking that maybe i could have become an architect but that was like very very quickly forgotten within an hour uh, but uh, but i think in the first day itself uh, my mother was proven right in her little you know by that very calm statement that she made it was indeed an idea that i had always liked and finally landed up there so this was the kind of a story of how i somehow heard of otherwise uh, you know thinking about it although there was one girl from an id who was uh, one batch senior to me anjali but in agra in that year you know uh those were the years before the internet or anything you know to to kind of know about an institute called national institute of design was absolutely impossible you know and much later i came to know that that cyclo style sheet was actually uh one of my uncle's friends who was a who was a his a, a medical college friends had brought that cyclo style sheet with him and he had left it in my room because he had asked for it for his niece but his his niece had changed her mind right of she had decided not to bother about an id so he never bothered about looking for it or asking for it so that cyclo style sheet remained at that room and very mysteriously found its way in between two of my books you know so destiny no thank you for that so just a quick one i mean in terms of that story of serendipity getting you from here to there one of the things that even on the comments if you see there are quite a few of your strengths which came out in that one is of course the power of observation um that you know it's like an antenna where you're picking up small small things the details you still remember dates which you're tucking away and you can bring it back later if it's an ad film or a story or content and the other aspect is how you are telling the story you had us all wrapped i'm sure it also helps when you are presenting a concept to a client where they are listening and you're building that picture in your head so on that note what were the skills or things you took away from an id that stint you had there what uh, equipped you uh, from campus what were the influences or you know what were the, the strengths you got from your full an id experience i you know uh, i really feel that all of us who get into an id are already in a way attuned to that place in the sense that that's that's why i guess we are chosen to go there but uh, what i found in an id was that it was slowly unraveling of and bringing out things that were possibly inside you right some of the talents 
some of the powers that you already had to bring them out to the fore. For example, I remember this uh, uh, in our very one of the very first few classes. This concept of form and space. Uh, and uh, then I remember one right in the beginning of our or of our classes only, uh, Mr. Bhandari taking us out uh, to uh, he was taking I think environmental exposure or some even earlier, earlier than that. And he told us to lie down on the road, uh, not on the road but on the lawn, and close our eyes and listen to all the sounds that we can listen to and make a note. And then he asked us what all did we hear. So this was like formalizing of, you know, to opening up the senses to everything of the, the concept of color, the concept of lines. And so I think what, uh, what NID definitely did was not only to unravel and make stronger what one already had, but to teach you these concepts so that some amount of formalizing came so that you can instantly kind of, whenever you need to use them, you can bring them to the fore, you know. Uh, and obviously, this, uh, this, uh, the other thing that I found NID gave us all is this whole, uh, uh, not just observational power, curiosity about things, uh, and whole design process of gathering as, as much knowledge as possible and then taking a leap from there, problem solving. Uh, but beyond all the courses that we did, you know, I think this, Deep love for great craft is something is something that NID gave us all, you know, which is ki yar, fir wo chalta hai nahi chalega, you know, and that that has followed me all through my life till now, right from NID to not not saying to anything ki chalta hai yar, isko main thoda jaldi kar deta hoon. And I was telling some of my uh, in one of the presentations to some of my you know to the to the people who are attending it. Uh, that uh, the world that we are living in right now and post-COVID world also, it's going to happen more and more that for lesser and lesser, you'll be asked to, to churn out things faster and faster. I'm sure many of us are already uh, feeling that, that the deadlines have become shorter, the, the, the money is involved, the budgets have shrunk. But what one needs to do is that it's not that because things have become shorter or budget has become smaller that we give up on the craft. I think we need to develop different kinds of muscles in the body that the reflex, first reflex is that, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example, which I was uh, talking about the other day also, which is that uh, I got uh, interested in, uh, you know, cooking, you know, Sajit, you, you spoke about it. And that board that I bought, uh, Sajit, you know, we bought it, kind of, we went to the uh, sh uh, shop together. And then I bought one uh, Japanese knife from Singapore, you know, one Miyabi knife, it's called, and it's a Japanese chef knife. And it's bloody sharp, you know. And, uh, and uh, so then I'm watching these videos of, uh, you know, Gordon Ramsay and Jamie Oliver. And Jamie Oliver is going, you know, when he's cutting, you know, these, uh, tomatoes and onions and slicing, yeah. And but the, he 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 taught taught this. I mean, all chefs that teach you this technique that you know the this kind of leads and you know so that this this never gets exposed when you are cutting. So now I'm learning, right? I'm learning to chop onions and I'm learning to chop tomatoes, right? But in the beginning. In the beginning, because the knife is really sharp, the whole concentration is on the technique, right? Because the cost, cost of one slip is your chopped finger, right? So you will become faster later, right? But in the beginning, the technique has to be there, right? And the getting the right technique is akin to getting the right craft, to be really, really craft, careful with craft. Now, over time, your muscles, your muscle memory develops to such an extent that you are going chick, 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 without cutting your finger. But the slicing and dicing that you're doing in that short time is really fast. Now, if you apply that, I'm sure that can be applied to the work that we do every day, whether we are making a film, writing a story, or doing a piece of graphic design, or designing an exhibition, or whatever, that our muscle memory is such that without losing craft, 
we are able to do it faster. And I think that's what we need to really, really work towards and work on. That's a brilliant uh, analogy. Um, so let's, because if we look at it, and I think especially when you said about the time we are in, and that's such a critical thing to bring up. And you will find, again, budgets are down, which means you have to do more work. And the analogy of, you know, the, even we think about in campus, you're given so much time to do a project and then it sort of picks up. And some of us also, when we bring in interns or new students, we tend to get impatient with the speed and pace. But this analogy sort of, you know, just puts that perspective because what you're doing is you're learning to dice and you're getting faster and you're getting better and better at it. So just a, a little deviation um, from design, you got into acting, TV shows, uh, and, and you went into that route. So what made that happen and what made you come back and what did you learn from that whole stint? So, you know, I mean, the, the right from uh, school itself, uh, I had, uh, I, I used to really like performing and, and I guess it was, it's all part of, uh, when you are, when there's a, a certain creative streak with you, and I'm sure all of you feel that, I'm sure all of you must be experiencing that yourself, that because we are creative in one form, we always have some other hobby which is also creative. So either we really love music or something or the other. So I've always loved uh, acting, performing. And uh, at an ID also did a lot of plays, you know. And every time I felt that when I was doing a play, the, the really good part that I was loving was uh, uh, to get into the character's shoes. Now, whether you're directing or if you're, whether you're acting, you are getting into a character's shoes and trying to think like that person. And that actually dictated why I finally loved advertising and went into advertising because in advertising also you do this every day. When you're trying to crack a problem, a piece of uh, communication, you are trying to get into the other person's shoes all the time or trying to see the other person's response to the story that you're writing. So, so I always thought that uh, this uh, acting, performing, and my work, it was all in somehow, somehow all, everything was kind of related and everything was feeding one from the other. So, so that's why I continued in Delhi also. I joined this uh, theater group called uh, Yatrik and uh, did, uh, started doing plays with them. And around that time, uh, Sujata, many of you would know. So Sujata was working with, uh, Colonel Kapoor was Sujata's, uh, uh, you know, like family friend, really close family friend. And she was working in uh, Colonel Kapoor's office. And I think through that, through, through her, I met Colonel Kapoor and Colonel Kapoor was at that time making Fauji. He had already done the base few, uh, main casting he had already done. And so he told me that, you know, there's a role of one of the friends, but that it's not a peripheral role. There will be some dialogues. So I said, dialogues, but the whole idea of shooting with the, you know, uh, us youngsters and this whole subject of army commandos and uh, Colonel Kapoor's personality, you know, all that I said, I immediately said yes to it. I said, it'll be fun, you know, it'll be, it'll be good fun to just shoot. Uh, shoot a web series or shoot a, shoot, a, shoot a series like this kind of a subject. And it was a, it was a hoot, you know, the, the whole shoot, although it was physically demanding, but uh, to work on that uh, was uh, amazing. You wake up six in the morning, go for these shoots, and uh, obviously a low, really, really low budget production. At that time, you know, only one serial coming uh, every night on TV and only Doordarshan was the channel that was there. So budgets were really low. So we are doing our own stunts and, you know, jumping over cliffs and uh, going for parrot training to Agra. And so some really, really interesting uh, uh, stories from there. And uh, in fact, I'll, I'll tell you one anecdote from there. So I had, uh, uh, by the time the shoot was on, right? And by the time we got into the, uh, to, to, uh, to the Agra stint, you know, we had, uh, we were in, uh, uh, so during the shoot, you know, all the time we used to keep singing songs and all that. And uh, we, uh, so Shah Rukh said that, you know, we won't go by train. Everybody was going to Agra by train. Everybody was booked. So he said, we won't go by train. 
he had a Maruti van, white one, Maruti van. He said, I'll drive and we'll all sing and go. You know, cigarette pita jayenge, gana gata jayenge. So anyway, we, that's what we did. We reached Agra, Agra still got over. We were all staying in one big room. Uh, I mean, the rest of the unit was there in different room, but four of us had taken one big room, which is uh, Shah Rukh, uh, Nikhil Chopra, who was that tall guy, and Gautam Bharadwaj and myself, which was uh, Pete, the guy who played Peter. And uh, so Mera shooting had finished a day before the rest of the people shoot. I mean, rest of the rest of these rest of the four, my shoot had finished a day early. So I'm coming out to go, take a train to go, and uh, Sharuk and these other three are going for the shoot. Suddenly they turn around and say, "Arey, you also don't go. We'll all go together tomorrow only." And I have to get back to Mudra because Mudra is the place that I was talking. I think Mudra or Linta is wherever I was was at that time. Uh, I had to get back to I had to get back to that uh, work because some pitch was happening. And uh, Shahrukh takes my bag and he looks at me and says, uh, "Acha, tell me one thing. Do you need the agency more right now, or the agency needs you?" So I said, of course, the agency needed me more. So he said, said then it's decided. And he told the other guy, he told the one hotel guy, he said, ye, ye bag jai wapis rakh do. And he said, tu chal, let's go in the van again. And he went for the shoot. So, you know, whether, so this whole thing of whether you need the agency more or, or the agency needs you more. So this whole collar khade karke, yeah. So I think collar khade karke hamesha rakhne chinge, you know. When, when, whichever work you are in right now, I'm not saying that you should not go for pitches or reach office late, but that's just a little funny anecdote that came to my head. Actually, so oh, anyway, sorry. So that's how that's how my uh, love for theater continued, and uh, then I it got into so any kind of I I found theater films they were all related storytelling. Storytelling was the big thing behind it. And in terms of what it gave you, I think any, any hobby that you pursue gives you so much. So what I learned from theater, which I used every day in my work, is A, about characters, about how to study people, how to get into their lives, how to study about them, what all to look at. And B, secondary thing was that when it came to presenting your own work, presenting stories, you know, painting a picture, then you're like performing every day in front of the clients. You know, whenever you whenever you're negotiating something, whenever you're presenting something, a piece of work, it might be whatever. It might be, it might be, uh, you know, your your it might be the annual report or it might be a creative piece of work. Anytime you're presenting, you're performing, you're telling a story. So if that kind of you keep in mind, things work out better. In fact, that uh, what you said is perfectly just brings us to the next question. I think one of the, the key skills a designer has got to have is how to present an idea to them. There are multiple aspects to it, especially in advertising that, you know, you've got to have that conviction. And I was watching, uh, you know, I was doing the research on you. I was seeing the roast which Vikas had done uh, with you. And, and it's lovely how Vikas handled that. And where you speak about, I think, you know, when you look at a film, when a film releases, an actor is nervous, you talk about all that stuff, but then also when an ad releases, you don't know whether it's gone right or not. And that, you know, you've got to stand up for your conviction. So, I mean, there are multiple aspects to the question. One is, how do you convince a client? What are the skills a designer needs to be able to do it? How do you know for sure that it's going to uh, work? And a lot of these skills which you've spoken about and continuing with that question, some funny stories of, you know, client uh, anecdotes or not, because I just want to give a quick one minute thing. I had a, my first client, I had to go and he gave me these pictures for this ad. Uh, it's for the fashion, this thing. And I said, no, this will spoil your brand. These pictures are looking really ugly. They've got to reshoot it. And he kept telling me, you have to use this picture. And I said, boss, this model is really ugly. And he said, boss, my beta hai hai. please use karo. So that was like a full backfire uh, for the client. So like that, if you can share, so I know what are the skills you use and also some of the funny stories you had. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I, I think, uh, as I said uh, earlier, sometime, I mean, I, as I said just now, which is that every time you go to present, I think first thing you should tell yourself is uh, that uh, it's a story that you're telling, 
that person. Whatever you might be presenting, it might be your uh, piece of product design, exhibition design, it might be a logo, it might be. So you have to get the person as engaged as, as you would if you were telling that person a really, really exciting, thrilling, suspenseful, comic, dramatic story, you know. So you, you, got, to, you got to find within what you have uh, elements that will turn, turn that into a story. It could, be to, to, it could be to do with uh, the kind of research you did. Now, how do you present dry research? You know, that dry research could have its own beautiful ways of presenting. So that's one. Uh, the other is that some of us feel, you know, that, oh, I'm not a good presenter. I'm not a good presenter. So I think uh, that one should absolutely shun because uh, for two reasons. One is that it's, it's audience psychology and it happens in all presentations also. When you go to present, unless that client is really, really khadus, I think you go to any presentation or you face any audience, they are rooting for you, even before you have begun. Because when we come as audience, when we come into a meeting, we come with an expectation that the person who will be going to present will succeed. So they are actually rooting for us. So that's the first thing which, is, which, which happens, which is good. Second is, I think, uh, develop your own interesting way of telling stories, interesting way of presenting. So that's the second one. The third thing, I've, uh, third and fourth and fifth that I've realized is that most of the times a presentation doesn't go well or becomes confrontational is when as uh, when we present to a certain client, right, we do not get onto the same page before we begin. So sometimes what has really, and this I now you do it as a rule, for many years now I've been doing it as a rule, is that when I go to present, I present a piece of creative work, you have to set the stage for it. And you set the stage for it. So it's not that I'm presenting a 30 second ad film to you, which is fantastic, you know, which has got a beautiful sunlight coming in and it's got great music by ARM. No, I'm not presenting that. That 30 second film is a solution to the business problem that you have. So we let's talk, talk about the problem that the business problem for which I've written that 30 second commercial. Let's go back to that. Let's go back to the brief how that brief was given to us, how the problem that, and this is what one understood from the problem. And because of this problem, this is where we reached, right? So I guess to get going on the same page, right, is critical, critical before you take off. And uh, so once that, that, uh, that field is established, after that, you have to use all the tricks of the trade that you have in your arsenal, whether it's to do with the, the way you tell the story, the way you use your voice, the way you use, uh, uh, if there are tools required, you need, you, need to build, uh, you need to build the mood of the place, carry some music with you. You want to show as many, if there's some great references, I mean, these are, these are the hygiene factor. I'm sure all, yeah. of, all of you do it already. I'm just repeating them that what all one needs to build a really, really good story. But before one tells the story, it's really important that we set the field. So that's what, that's what I uh, have been doing. And uh, most of the successful presentations that one does, one realizes that, uh, that uh, this is what one has, had been doing. And the other thing is that, uh, you know, one other thing we shouldn't forget is that, and I'm not being Machiavellian about it. It's not that we need to be Machiavellian about it. The curiosity that I was talking about earlier is that how curious about you, about your client, you know? Do you know that client's birthday? Do you know what the client's uh, kids do? You know, do you know what client's hobbies are? You know, yeah. so this, this compassion, com you know, there are three C's that have now come into my life or have been in my life for a long time, which is, Curiosity, uh, creativity, curiosity, compassion. So creativity and compassion leading to create creativity. So curiosity, curiosity about, not just about the client's product, but about the client. There was a, like, there was a client who loved 
talking about uh, there's a client who loves talking about paintings so since you also like paintings talk to the client about paintings before you get into talking about the work you know whenever possible i'm not saying that you have to do it as a as a but i'm saying uh, it's another human being that you're presenting to and uh, that's what that's what that's what all these things have kind of always helped me uh, sonal as for you yeah, you wanted to yeah uh, a couple of instances where uh, so i was in uh, so there are times when i've kind of when uh, there was a time when uh, there was a film that i'd written which i really liked in in malaysia and for for an acne cream a pimple cream for uh, this big client and the client always researched their films but i knew that if they research this film it will die because he can't research the board for this film that that i had written so i decided to pull favors got one production house involved i directed the film myself got one uh, copywriter from the office to play the lead role and made the film and then presented it so they bought it after that so that was one there was a time when uh, uh, this was 5 uh, 6 years back uh, i was handling a mcdonald's number one as a big client which i was really really involved in and i really liked that brand this was when i was in ddb and we were in amdabad and sorry in bangalore it's a bangalore client so i was with the with the bangalore team we had worked on a campaign and we were supposed to present it the next day which was a, a campaign on friendship an advertising campaign and uh, late in the evening i got this thought that uh, you know what uh, why does it have to be a campaign you know uh, then i went on to the youtube and started seeing these farewell videos of friends and i saw that every farewell video had this soundtrack of uh, yaaron dosti badi haseen hai you know that kk song lovely song but most farewell videos of colleges schools offices most of them had this song as the so i said what if mcdonald's number 1 had a an anthem for friendship which became the soundtrack for all friendships in india you know instead of an advertising campaign so i sat in the evening wrote the wrote this aisi vesti dosti nahi number 1 yaari hai called one music director in bombay a friend and who had worked with earlier also on many scratch recordings and i said uh, can you send me something by tonight you know these are the words and this is the kind of tune i had in mind and i kind of sung it to him and by the by that late late that night he sent that song recording next day instead of presenting the campaign i spoke about this i spoke about friendship anthem as the soundtrack of all friendships in india right and that's what this brand should own and presented the song and it was approved immediately and after that we wrote the story on it and then we shot the film and then whole lot of things happened under uh, number one yari but the genesis was this and this is how it was presented so every time you present there might be something yeah, something you bring in but every time it has to be told like a beautiful beautiful dramatic thought out story so tell us about the iconic cadbury ad the whole story behind how the idea came about even your pigeons on the field how was the making oh, yeah. that so that was yeah oh, so, so what uh, this was in uh, 1994 i think so now before that uh, chocolates uh, chocolate advertising in india was only to kill children because it was always directed to children so there was this i think cadbury uh, cadbury sometimes cadbury can say it better than words was the line it's a beautiful line and it had been long running line for a long time and uh, i think the commercial used to be one uh, one couple coming home and they brought chocolates for their children who are like you know like thoda gussa hai unse and they give them the chocolates you know and they are happy so basically what i'm trying to say is that chocolate advertising was only directed towards kids and uh, so cadbury as uh, as the market leader decided to open the market which was quite a daring thing to do to open the category and open it to adults for so anyway from there then the campaign came which was uh, the real taste of life and then we worked on these various stories and one of the stories so there were two films that launched this whole thought of the real taste of life 
and the whole idea was that there are many things in life that you would like to do but societal pressures and you know this whole thought ki yaar log kya kahenge you stop yourself even though your heart is saying you must do it and that is exactly like eating chocolates you would like to eat chocolates because everybody people bought chocolates for kids but everybody ate it at home that was the scenario at that time so it was meant for kids but once it came home everybody ate it so so that behavior was akin to eating chocolates you would love to eat chocolates but you won't eat chocolates because are log kya kahenge ye to bachcho ki cheez hai so from that came that film you know where this i don't know some of you might have seen it it was a montage film with this song kuch khaas hai hum sabhi mein kuch baat hai hum sabhi mein where a old man is kicking a football then a uh, whole lot of things there's a little bite of a chocolate falls on the ground one boy picks up and eats it you know a whole lot of these little, little very very uh, lovely there's an old lady who's with with little young girls playing hopscotch in the in the in the in the building compound so lots of these little situation and this was a film and then there was a one film which was uh, based on a true story that had happened within ogilvy in an ogilvy romance where uh, uh, the girlfriend was told the moment the guy uh, the the colleague makes uh, hits a six she should run to the field dancing and you know embarrass him so based on that little incident this uh, script was worked out we worked on the script and uh, so we i remember we were shooting it like 6 7 in the morning and uh, golden hour the first shot in that golden hour uh, which was set up was uh, shimona who was playing that role and i remember uh, going through like 50 60 100 auditions of various girls doing that dance move because we had to get that you know that very bindas dance move which finally this girl who's name was shimona rashi uh, who we finally chose she did that and uh, and i was like uh, in terms of uh, what she'll wear uh, work with the production house you know and decided to give everybody else very grace suits versus this girl with fro- flowing floral dress so when she comes out dancing in slow motion you'll see uh, you'll see her against that uh, a very stiff world which is in gray suits and she with all the freedom will come out dancing so that shot was set up for like 6:37 in the morning and he started to shoot and she comes out and you know she crosses that uh, little rope and the security is running after her and she's going dancing you know with a with the chocolate in her hand after the after the boyfriend hits a six and i'm looking at it you know and uh, have i had done a lot of mehnat in terms of the colors and everything and i got this idea that you know what if there are these beautiful white doves so as she comes out dancing the doves will take off and in slow motion they'll be ro- you know flying next to her and that will be the epitome of freedom you know with her flowing dress and doves taking off into the sun- sunrise so i suggested it to the director everybody looked at me as if i had gone mad 6:30 in the morning to think of where does one get pitches but anyway we are in bollywood so the director mahesh patai said okay let's stop the shoot and take us half an hour break and somehow get the pigeons so anyway great production pigeons were arranged so these white pigeons are there now and after half an hour 45 minute break the shoot starts again action and this girl comes out dancing you know comes out dancing and the pigeons they are going chuk, 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 chuk. they're like 6 inches 8 inches 1 foot 1 and 1/2 foot because they are bollywood pigeons they are not meant to fly so now everybody is giving me dirty looks so after that my job was that every time the girl came uh, dancing i used to be on the side you know going hoo, hoo. to pigeons to fly so you should watch that commercial again and uh, i don't know if i have it i'll see if i can play that yeah you should watch that commercial again and see 
how our minds fool us because if you see it first without me telling you the story you'll feel as if the pigeons have nicely flown but they're actually not flying they're like jumping two and a half feet two feet you know like that so that was the story that uh, <laughs> so so now for the want of time i'm going to uh, ask you a last question and then i'm going to give it to amit gulati to sort of collate a few of the things and give his reactions for closing so one of the key words um, which i've learned from you which i've been shared with you is a word called pivot and you know the last time we met in the peak of your career you just decided that you know i'm going to do something completely different and and pivot without any fear and move into a completely new territory which was complete your passion um so writing content and uh, it's just something which you woke up and said i'm going to pursue this uh, and i walked away i remember after you know uh, our uh, session autos club thinking that you know it's never too late to to pivot to change uh, to think back and see what is it that you really love it so being stuck with that with the rat race or you know uh, being defined by stuff so i just want you to share with us this this new space you are in uh, and, and what you're doing and what made you realize and get into it and before we take it over to amit yeah so you know i uh, going back to that day that i about uh, the number one yari when i sat down and i was writing that and i wrote har aasma se unchi hai samandro se gehri aisi waisi dosti nahi hai number one yari hai and i started to think about my childhood in agra you know how with friends uh, in the peak of summers you know some aur kuch entertainment to hota nahi tha filme hoti thi jo ki mahine mein ek baar dekhne ko milti thi ab patange hoti thi sham ko udate the to wo patang jo kat ke aati thi and you are running in those streets behind those patangs and uh, those summers and uh, aisi waisi dosti nahi hai number one yari hai dhoop uh, mein chhao mein छाव में धूप में जाने कितने रूप में ये तपी है ये जली है सोना बनके ये मिली है बरसों सवरी है ऐसी वैसी दोस्ती नहीं है नंबर वन यारी है सो दिस थॉट्स यू नो ऑफ द द द वर्ड्स दैट आई रोट केम स्ट्रेट फ्रॉम 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 लाइफ भटकू कभी तो भटकू कभी तो जोड़ती Uh, anyway, I've forgotten the words, but these first few lines that I told you about धूप में झाव में धूप में जाने कितने रूप में ये तपी है ये जली है सोना बन के ये मिली है बरसों सवरी है ऐसी वैसी सो धूप में तप के जो दोस्ती होती है वो सोना बन के मिलती है एंड में तो दो समर्स दैट योर फ्रेंडशिप्स एव सीन सो यू नो द सो मच ऑफ स्टोरी टेलिंग इन माई हेड दट आई थॉट दैट अभी एडवर्टाइजिंग इट्स नॉट दैट आई एम आई गॉट अवे फ्रॉम एडवर्टाइजिंग i thought one should get into currently because the scenario was right i had been uh, a lot of people had started asking me production houses ott platforms in terms of what i was doing when would i you know write something for them you know and so more and more of these questions were coming these uh, inquiries and so to say and on the other hand i was seeing so much of work happening around me and then i had started some amount of direction also you know the like last number one yari with that guy with the prosthetic leg who jumps from the cliff with his friends you know with his friends make him get over that fear so that was directed by me also so when all this was happening i decided that storytelling that i want to do should not be just restricted to 30 second 40 second 60 second 2 minute 3 minute or activation or branded storytelling but should now explore into feature film should explore into a book to a book maybe to web series for ott platforms so it's just that for me it was just a graduation although i went independent so it might seem from outside a very daring move i think it is daring in a way but uh, i you know sometimes your heart tells you that you are ready for it you know and i think uh, uh, one other thing that my mom had told me uh, when i had just got into my first job in lintas is that remember and it's a very odd thing to tell your uh, son when he's joining the job for the first time remember to tell your keep your job always on the tip of your shoe so i was like kind of amazed here tip of the shoe what does she mean by that so basically what she meant was don't get so married so precious to it so insecure about it 
that you stop forget doing good work you know so uh, so that was one lesson which was always there so when i thought the the time was right and i was felt prepared decided to and i'm so happy that that happened because there are so many a variety of things that i'm currently doing thankfully right now uh, touch wood for that that uh, although the times are bad right now but still some very interesting projects are happening so so that's how i kind of got into it oh, and uh, i would still like to uh, tell all of us who are listening to this is that uh, the times are tough but that's fine and uh, as just just to reiterate that i i also love blackjack uh, black playing blackjack whenever i get a chance and in blackjack in a six deck game every 21 games you get a blackjack so there is a chance that the probability of getting a blackjack in a six deck card six deck game is uh, 4.8 to 6% so do not worry at some point in time the blackjack will be coming so just just be absolutely ready for that opportunity yeah so no thank you so much sunil so on that note i'm going to pass it on to amit the other benjamin button in our group amit unmute yeah thanks sunil as always phenomenally inspiring and i'm sure a lot of us uh, haven't heard some of these stories before so amazing it was really amazing couple of things that uh, you know came out really strong was you know your rootedness and i think i've told you this story before and i don't know if you remember it uh, when i came to bombay the first time just as a newly minted graduate looking for a job uh, one of my uncles who was your client uh, yeah. told me the first guy you should meet is sonal he's going to tell you what bombay is all about and uh, i remember i called you up those days there were no mobile phones i called your office and uh, i thought you know there's this big advertising exec and i don't know i'm going to walk into a fancy office and all that and i think those days your office was right next to mantralay uh, yeah yeah the apj house yeah 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 it was a tiny window through which uh, you should your favorite client huh? yeah so i remember he sent me to you to meet uh, you know this fancy executive who was from nid he said if you want to learn about what nid is all about in the real world how to apply your skills go and meet sonal so that really stayed with me and of course i was really impressed that you had the grace to meet somebody just off the block i think you spent probably half an hour with me we chatted about this and that but there were three four things that my uncle told me and then they got confirmed then and now again Uh, i think the first one is your rootedness you've not forgotten your roots and you know your command over the vernacular the language the storytelling and the uh, you know small town stories which uh, you know all of us have so much nostalgia for i think a lot of your success has been not to forget that i think that's a very important lesson because nowadays when i go to nid and i see young people they are seeing what's happening all over the world they're not uh, really they don't want to be indian they want to be global and i think uh, through so many 30 years of work you're still so much of a rooted guy i mean that's super inspiring and uh, that's one and of course uh, you know your clients love you you see the other thing i learned from you was that uh, you have to build such a strong rapport with your clients be one of them uh, understand what their dreams are all about what what success they are looking for so that you truly are seen as a partner because you know whenever i speak to folks in the industry they don't think of sonal as a agency guy they think of you as a friend as one of them and somebody who's going to help them become successful i think these are two really big narratives that i've seen personally and i'm super fortunate to have seen them at close hand thank you thank sir. you thank you so much thank you so much i've had i think it goes back to what i was saying some time back and uh, again not in a machiavellian way but being very curious about what they like what they do and always always seeing them as i've never seen any client ever as a client i've always seen them as as people as people i can talk to about music cricket you know depending on what what they like what they don't like and the way we converse among ourselves you know uh, and the, i think the moment you break that boundary uh, the moment you break that boundary from at least your side sometimes you might not get the permission from the other side that's fine but at least from your side when you start to see it that with that empathy with that uh, what do we call it compassion empathy being in their shoe you know uh, 
that's when so that's when it turns into some kind of a friendship some kind of a acquaintance which is more than a client and uh, client and agency relationship so that's what that's what i've seen and that's what has worked all the time i mean what i learned from you was that if you get word of mouth references from your client then you're set in life and uh, you know that's something that i learned from our first interaction not just the interaction itself but what happened before and what happened after so i think uh, i'm sure a lot of us who met you over the years sajid gave some fantastic stories i think you've inspired a lot of people on the way no it's been a, it's been a pleasure to meet uh, you know there's so many so many good souls so much to learn from everybody you know and i think uh, one approach that i've always had and has always worked is to to have a certain kind of and very very important for any creative person is to be openness about the mind and openness about the heart which is your assimilating experiences you know you are you are taking in experiences you are taking in stories and uh, when you start to do that you automatically become a good listener you automatically become a good observer so from your point of view you might be just going with an open heart assimilating experiences but the way the other person sees you my god is such a good listener so or uh, such a good observer you yeah. know so that has always worked always 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 I imagine darjeeling and rajesh kana is wearing that uh, blue uh, you know blue those brown collar safari suits whoever people who are old enough will know what safari suit was right so you have to watch the eyebrows carefully yeah. <clears throat> and uh, he is singing the song to sharmila tagore who is somewhere there and looking very demure and asari and uh, because it's that voice ex कुरा का गज था ये मन मेरा 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 सीधा दार्ज दार्जिलिंग एको लिख दिया नाम उस पे तेरा 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 टूट न जाए सपने मैं डरता हूं मिस दिन अखियों में न न कजरा रे मतवारे ये इशारे खाली दर्पण था जीवन मेरा 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 एंड नाउ द काइट फ्लाइंग ऑफ आगरा उसपे तेरा 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 थैंक यू गर्मी में धूप में बस के अंदर बैठ के क्योंकि गर्मियों की छुट्टियों में जाया करते थे कभी कभी फिरोजाबाद तो हम बैठते थे एंड बस में बैठे हुए हैं दिस टू बी दिस बुक सेलर हु यूज टू गेट एंड ही वॉज लाइक मल्टीपल सेलर सो येड बॉक्स ही यू नो खट्टी मीठी स्वीट यूज टू कीप ऑल काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स बट ही एड दीज लिल बुक्स विद इन थिन बुक्स एंड He used to get onto the bus, and every time five minutes before the bus used to start, so that means the bus is packed now. You know, 
So I used to get onto the bus and I used to hit the side. Cut. App ki bas jane mein keval 5 minute ka time baki hai. App ki bas jane mein keval 5 minute ka time baki hai. App ka bachcha angreji mein fail ho jata hai, kam number pata hai. उसको हम अंग्रेजी सिखाने के लिए ले आए हैं वही आसान तरीका इस पुस्तिका में कविता के सिखाना बताया गया है फादर पिता है मदर है माता का रिलेशन माने रिश्ता नाता गर्व होती है बंधु बक्सा होती है so i i used to every time watch him you know and say my god what a so he had the whole tricks up his sleeve thak 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 was the with that opening image thak 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 bhai aur behno which is like addressing the uh, flagging the audience bhai aur behno app ki bas jaan yeah you are right now after that Conflict. आपका बच्चा अंग्रेजी में फेल हो जाता है कम नंबर पाता है दैट इज कॉन्फ्लिक्ट एंड देन कम्स द रेजोल्यूशन एट दी एंड विच इज दल विच दे इन इन फिल्म स्क्रिप्ट टर्म्स यू कॉल द सॉन्ग एंड डांस यू नो फॉर विच इज संदूक Now imagine a bus full of these sweating passengers. This is like fantastic entertainment for them, you know. So, 25 rupees of the book also bought. It was entertainment too. And after that, he gave a discount. Twenty-five percent off, fifty percent off. If you go out, the book's price will be fifty rupees, fifty rupees, fifty rupees. But the company's price will be fifty rupees. 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 क्योंकि मांगने का कोई कीमत कोई पैसा नहीं या इफ यू रियली लुक एट इट 